Today what we're going to look at is scientific communication in the context of remote sensing. Communication is the foundation of what we need to do as scientists. Um, without good communication, we don't get papers published and we don't get grants. And that is the currency of where we work, like it or not. Okay, so it helps you not only in scientific discipline, but also outside of that as well. So what I've got today is, is an exercise based around communicating remote sensing. And to start with, I'm going to introduce Alice Manning, who's come along for this morning session. And she is a math teacher by background. So she's used to dealing with relatively complicated concepts and bringing it down into a school level, okay, which is really all about the communication. And that's really what we're interested in today. She does work on campus as, um, as a student retention officer um, here. So while she's here, her main her main goal at CDU is to keep students in the campus and studying. All right, so that's how she helps you guys in general from behind the scenes too. All right, so she's got a really big interest in how we use digital technologies in the classroom as well. So a lot of the stuff that I've been using this semester is actually thanks to Alice because she's given me a lot of things to think about and work with. So she's got a really good session planned with you guys this morning. Um, so make sure you ask her lots of questions if you need to. Um, and then we'll work through the rest of today what's going to happen a little bit later. Thanks, Alice. Um, I don't have any knowledge about remote sensing, so don't ask me questions about that, please. Um, but I certainly, as I say, have a bit of a background in communication. So I teach, I used to teach maths, but I also used to teach English as well. So um, it's all about clear communication, particularly as a teacher. So your first little activity there that I can see some people have managed to fill in some of the blanks next to the various uh, acronyms listed. Now, you were just given a list of, of letters, if you like, okay? And you were asked to think about what they mean. Now I'm going to give you another sheet of paper. And this is sort of one between two. And I want you to read the paragraph at the top of this page and then try to complete the list of acronyms, which you will notice is the same as the list that you were trying to complete when you first walked into the classroom. Some of the listed acronyms are not uh, by definition acronyms. Some of them are just uh, shortened words. That might help. OK, I will leave it there, even if you haven't been able to complete all of those acronyms. Can I just ask maybe for a quick show of hands? Did anyone find this second task easier than the first, which was just the list of letters, try and do what you can? Did anyone find that easier? A few people nodding, yeah? OK, so this is just an activity really to show you that context in terms of how you provide information to people is really important. That list of letters or acronyms that you were given on the table when you first arrived, there was no context to it. You had no idea what those acronyms might have referred to. Some people might have cottoned on fairly quickly. You might have seen CDU in amongst that list and started to think, oh, maybe that's Charles Darwin. Therefore, maybe these other acronyms are to do with university. However, in the second activity, you had a paragraph which started to explain things and to put those acronyms into context for you. So let's see how many you got right, first of all. Charles Darwin University, Casarina, Alice Springs and Bachelor. Now those three, the second, third and fourth ones, of course refer to our campuses. And in that paragraph, you were told that we have, where is it? Um, Students can choose to study face-to-face -face at one of our four Northern Territory campuses and centres. So the DPC, you may not have got that if you weren't aware of it, is called Desert People's Centre. But those four things are about our campuses, so you were told that. So it might have helped if you hadn't already guessed what those four acronyms meant. The next sentence told you about whether or not um, the units were categorised as OLR, OL or PB depending on whether they were offered fully online, partially online, or relying on written materials. So OLR is our online reliant. Now that's the partially online, where you still come face to face, but you're also expected to have a look at the, the website or the LearnLine site. Online, of course, and then PB print-based. And I heard someone sort of get that. That was a, a light bulb moment there at some point in the discussion. S1, S2 and SS, you were told that we have three semester offerings at CDU. 
So perhaps those three acronyms being placed together in the context of that sentence might have helped you. S1 on its own or SS on its own may not have made a lot of sense to you and so on. Some of the others may have been a little bit uh, challenging. Academic liaison unit may not have been one you, you might have guessed even from the paragraph. But you might have been able to get some part of the ALLSP, if you didn't already know, the Academic Language and Learning Success Program. I'd used a key word around success and another word around learning as part of the sentence when I gave you the paragraph. The same with higher ed and VET. That last sentence of the paragraph talked about the two different pathways that CDU offers for students. And the very last part of that sentence talked about vocation and training. So we can see that VET there fits nicely in with that idea of vocation and training in the sentence. So in terms of what you probably did or what I hoped you might have done and potentially what your future audiences will do, they'll be looking for keywords within the, the information that they give, uh, you give them. And they'll be using that information that you give them to try to make sense of what it is you're trying to tell them. So the words that I've got highlighted there in yellow are sort of the key words, if you like, that I purposefully put into my paragraph to try and give you some context so that when you were trying to work out what those acronyms meant, you had a bit of an idea as to how they fitted into a bigger picture around the university in terms of that being the topic. Before I go any further though, do you think that I made any assumptions about you as my audience? Okay, at the very simplest level, I assumed that you had some familiarity with some of the things that are going on at this university that you're currently studying at. Okay, so I did make that assumption. But that's okay, because I knew I was presenting to you. Okay, I'm allowed to make assumptions about my audience, as long as I think that I know who my audience is and what background or knowledge they bring to a text, whether it be a video, a paragraph, or whatever. So a couple of things I suppose I wanted to emphasise in this particular activity are these things here. Firstly, think carefully about using acronyms. If you are or feel this burning desire to use an acronym when trying to communicate to people, make sure that they will know what it is, and if you don't think they will, make sure you explain it first. My first sentence in that paragraph said, at Charles Darwin University, and then in brackets, CDU. So I can use CDU from then on because I've already explained what CDU stands for. Make sure you contextualise and explain any terms, whether they be acronyms or other terms, okay? So it's important to actually explain what they mean before you can continue to use them. And then, of course, as I just said, being conscious of who your audience is and the assumptions that you're making about them.